Okay, guys, thank you so much to be here with us today. This is the first of a long series of uh, meetings for coaches. The name of this idea is Rugby Meets Italy, Italy Meets Rugby, because I think it's really important to share from different point of view, different cultures, the, what is rugby, no? Because we have, uh, we, we're looking at uh, the rugby championship, there are different ideas of rugby some more closer to our identity of coach, some completely different, but every of this kind of uh, mentality, these ideas of coaching actually in attack this time are really important and uh, we can always learn from something different, right? So this is the idea to share. For, um, I'm happy that to see a lot of Italians into the, the meeting and also other coaches from all over the world because we have a lot of other coaches that's really nice thank you to be here um, this is gonna be the first and uh, next week we are coming with uh, other ones we're gonna start also with uh, Sam Ladner talking about analysis and uh, creative attack attacking setup and we're gonna have Sergio Zorzi is a um, coach educator uh, from Italy so these are the upcoming week um, meetings today I'm really happy to have here Andre Tredu thank you to be with us, Andre, because it's you, you've been the first to, to chat with me. It was really cool because you were really in a lot of energy you put in that. Uh, I remember last year when you talk about uh, defense was really interesting, your, uh, your webinar you did. So I'm really happy to have you here. Andre, you, uh, actually you are coaching in South Africa, right? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, so at the moment I'm back home in South Africa, um, but I've been fortunate to coach in uh, Japan at a top league club there and also coach in Russia, which I think um, was a really good experience to be able to understand where the tier two and three nations are also at in terms of rugby development. That's cool. And um, now, actually, uh, your coaching team, uh, you're coaching uh, uh, varsity. So which is the age of the varsity team? Yeah, so the varsity, uh, we're coaching in the varsity cup, which are boys that range from 19 years old to 24, 25 years old. Okay. old. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So, under the stage is yours, if you want to start. Guys, if you have questions, you can uh, just jump into the, um, the chat if you want. If it's something related at the end, we can have a quick uh, question and answer at the, um, at the end of the meeting. And uh, I remember you that for now we are with a basic Zoom, so it's going to stop uh, when it's uh, to 12 in uh, for everybody but we're gonna start again so we're gonna have a little mini break of one minute and the same link everything is the same and we can jump jump in again so Andre I'm gonna mute myself and I'm really happy to listen to you, you all right thank you very much Otavia. thank you for the opportunity guys as I said um, I'm a South African coach so there's no right or wrong. I think um, currently in the world, everybody sees Cheslin Colby as one of the most exciting players and he's very a very small player. So I look at a tech that I want all my players to have all the skills. Um, so there's a lot of things and we've got to go and look at what is our goals with the tech. So um, with no further ado, let's start um, and see. Okay, so just a question for the coaches. Maybe they can just, uh, the question is, is the game moving back to the attacking cycle? So we all know um, South Africa won the World Cup with a very defensive-minded um, uh, game plan and tactics. But if we look at um, rugby, the teams at the moment that are, are doing the best around the world, you look at Toulouse, Harlequins, who won the Premiership, Bristol Bears, who've done well in the Premiership, and Exeter Chiefs, they've all moved towards a more attacking game. So uh, every level that you, you, you coach at is different because your time and pressure gets um, less the higher up you go. But it's very good to see in the world uh, of rugby that at the moment um, you've got attacking teams dominating at franchise level. 
So if we go and look at that, let's just have a look at some of uh, a short video clip of some of those attacking um, games. So I'm just going to play this and we can have a, all have a look. Okay, so you can see there um, Harlequins kicking it and uh, Bristol not scared to, to have a go from deep. Nothing is on. And uh, some really good skills, uh, sidestep, uh, running at the space, uh, drawing and passing. And a great little try there in the corner that, that came from a counter-attack. So that's one thing that we're going to have a look at in a bit. Yeah, we can have a look. A nice start to move and a great angle from um, Dom Brunt, the number eight from Harlequins, um, and a good finish. And wasn't that semi-final amazing? I mean, uh, Harlequins was 28-0 down, and they managed to come back and eventually win the game. There you see Tyron Green um, from South Africa, and we'll have a look at some of the details on that. Um, drifting on the ball, opening up the space. And there another nice little just attacking the inside shoulder and putting the player away on the outside. So as we can see, those teams have started to evolve the game in terms of an attacking mindset. So I'd like to ask the coaches, what is the purpose of their attack? Maybe they can just quickly write some, some stuff on the chat. I'll have a look there. Um, so if you can just write in the chat, what is the purpose of your attack? Um, let's have a look and see some of the comments. Um, anybody, have you got a goal with your attack? What is the purpose of your attack? Attack is meant to be clinical, crucial numerical advantage. Manipulate defense, creating mismatches, Enrico. Nice. It's all good stuff. Um, okay, so let's just get a few more comments. Only three or four comments, guys. You're welcome to, to throw it in there. What is the goal or, or the purpose of your attack? Okay, so let's have a look here. Uh, keep the ball uh, to the ball wins the game. Very good, uh, Constadin. Okay, so let's have a look quickly. I'm going to just close it there. So the first thing is we want to attack to score points. So whether we're scoring tries or putting the defense under pressure so that we can get penalties to score points, that's important. And an interesting study was done and um, the team that scores the most tries and inevitably win the game um, on 89% of uh, the time. So that's really an interesting point. Um, then obviously with attack, we want to create line breaks, create space, create continuity. So somebody said, keep the ball. So we have to have a look at how can we create continuity. A big thing the New Zealand coaches believe in is how to create flow. Um, so flow means that you don't get into a situation where you've got um, too much slow ball. So you've got a continuous movement of the ball. Um, then there's a create go forward, which is a very South African thing to do is we're not going to be asking questions or doing something silly. We tend to be a, a nation that wants to, with our big physical runners, go over you and physically uh, dominate you. So that's more the South African mindset in the last two. But if we look at, um, now there's a lot of things that we can look at, but for me, what's really important is the KISS principle and the less is more principle. So we've got to keep it simple, stupid, and less is more. So it's no need that you have four or five or six uh, moves slow it, make it less, have a shape and, and play so that your players understand what you're trying to achieve. So if I go to the next slide, where do tries come from? And we're gonna have a look here at this slide. So 19%, and this is a study that was done um, by um, a guy called Nick Hill on the All Blacks. And he uh, mentioned that uh, 19 the All Blacks 19% of tries come from scrums and 32% from lineouts. So obviously a big percentage of the lineout uh, tries will be because of uh, the mauling. Um, 
but then 44% of tries come from turnovers. And that's generally the same in other parts of the game. So we're going to have a look just now at um, some things there. And now if we look at the principles where the All Blacks tries come from. So tries are generally scored with 2.9 rucks and then also 6.7 passes. And what are some principles that stood out from the All Blacks and the try scoring? The first thing was that they run hard and fast into space. So um, we'll have a look at a bit of that. So that's basically your running lines. What running lines are you, are you coaching? Are you coaching running lines at all? Uh, then passing, obviously catch and pass, it's very important. And then width, uh, width of attack and offloading. So that's uh, continuity, keeping the ball moving. And then the last one is interesting side steps. So if the coaches have a look at this, uh, let's just have a look. Okay, so if the coaches can just, I want to ask them a question before I carry on, um, is the two things that stand out to me here is the 44% where the tries come from in the turnovers. And then I want to ask the coaches, what do they see in terms of the principles? Which one of those things is not a skill? Maybe wide, being staying wide is not a yeah, width. Okay, skill. so width 100% Otavia. So if, if I can just answer that, so width, if we look in the middle, yeah, width is not a skill, the rest of it is skills. So the first one hard and fast into space is your running lines. Are you running hard and fast for the space that the defense gives us? The second thing is passing is the skill. Then width isn't the skill and we'll chat a bit about width um, because a lot of the presentation is about that width and what does that width do? And then offloads is a skill and sidesteps is a skill. All right. So do we ever train to score points from turnovers. And we're gonna have a look at that a bit later, um, but let's have a look at uh, turnovers. So this is a video from um, the team that I coached and we can have a look here, is that we're trying to do a kicking play um, and that kicking play, so just quickly, I'll just go back slightly. So that kicking play is to try and isolate um, the full back at the back. And now because they're not ready, we're going to try and get a turnover within two phases of the kick. Okay, so let's have a look what they do. There we two guys, we should actually win the ball right there, but we're putting a lot of breakdown pressure. And this takes, um, their attack is not ready now because they've had to add numbers and we've isolated the fullback at the back. So now you'll see we've got six, four or five big uh, defenders who's going to try and get the ball back with a positive uh, ripping of the ball there and, and we get the ball back. And now the transition is important and very important that we've got width on attack when we transition. And now it's a three on two. We need the passing skills and the running skills to finish off a, a very nice try. So if I go back here, we, the way we train, we've got to train through playing games, making it interesting for the players. But as soon as there's a mistake, we must actually allow our teams to counterattack. So that's a very important part of, to become a very important part of attack is how do we counterattack? How do we move the ball to space? And then the second thing is width. Now, if I look at this and, and that's, sorry, I'll just go back quickly. Uh, okay, so if we look at this uh, width, the one that stands out, that's not a skill. So we've got to train for 
turnovers. And then the second thing is we're going to train for width. Now, width isn't a skill. It's our system that we play. Now, most coaches will play a one three three one across the world. And if I'm honest with you, I've never been a fan of a one three three one uh, system. Um, because to me, you don't get enough width. That's the first thing. And then the second thing of a one three three one is that you're asking your forwards to be the main decision makers when we go to um, the first receiver role. So if we have a look here, the once again, yeah, you see the All Blacks. This was in the World Cup. And we're going to have a look at two different shapes here. So there you can see they've got two-man pod off the nine. And then they've got a three-man pod with the back in behind. You can see there they pop it off the ground. So the continuity, there was no one contesting on the ground for South Africa. So let's just have a look now. Good hard run into space. Once again, the two-man pod and the three-man pod. So the All Blacks are doing something different. Hard and fast into space because of the rush defense. There's a decoy runner. Look at the width which they're attacking with. And although they were going nowhere, suddenly somebody sees some space and attacks it. Okay, so if we go to the second. So what the All Blacks were doing there, they were playing, trying to beat the rush of South Africa. And they were playing two men off nine with three men off ten. So their shape was more like a one, two, three, two. And yeah, we see the blues, the Auckland blues, in a shape that I really like. It's a two, 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 two. So they'll have two, um, two forwards in the 15 meters, two in this, between the poles in the 15 meters, and two outside the poles with a backline player in behind. You can see the setup here. So that's a forward, two forwards, two forwards with a backline player behind. And let's have a look here as the video plays, what great um, space this opens up. So there's an the inside threat keeping the defense honest. There's your, your, your two two-man pods. You can see the guy right at the end keeping the width. And though it was going nowhere, it opened up something, space in the middle, and they could attack the space in the middle. So if I look here, yeah, you'll see this is also the side that I've been coaching. So it was very static, a good little offload to get some momentum going. Um, the scrum off must play the ball a bit miffed. Anyway, so we go into the side pod. We've got good um, width on the attack with the side pod. So I'm just going to go there. Okay, so yeah, you can see we're playing off 10. There's a pot of three players. And we've got the defense narrow. This team on the other side is Marty's or Stellenbosch University. That's one of the best um, universities in South Africa. And as it plays, you can see great decision to hit the face ball in front of the first two guys to the last guy. We get that slight momentum. There's a decoy runner, another face ball, and we into width, and those are forwards um, creating the space on the outside. So my thing is that we can't just stick to a one three three one system. We've got to look at um, mixing it up. In this case, we played a two three one two system, but I also like the two 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 system a lot. Okay, this is my Russian um, boys. So if you can have a look here off the set piece. Um, so sometimes you've got to be flexible as well. It's not going to be perfect. So we played a 2-2-2-2 two, 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 two system here with the, with the Russian boys, but sometimes players are out of position. And as coach, you've got to be flexible to say, okay, we've got to be adjustable. So you can see there they're getting it to width some good um, momentum and why i'm showing you this R russian clip is that especially you guys coaching italy bulgaria other places that <clears throat> when i got to this specific team they couldn't pass the ball past the 12 channel and on this occasion you can see that they can play the ball right uh, across the width of the field and if we continue um and it's not perfect guys 
there's a backline player with on the 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Normally the backline player will go with to clean, but you can see there's a constant flow of the ball um, because of the width we're playing with. That means that the fence has to have a bigger spacing across the field, which opens up <coughs> sorry, the space in the middle. Here's a turnover from the lineout. So we got the turnover. We move it out wide. And you'll see the 2-2-2 two, two, two shape come into play very nice. Um, so if we, if we have a look there, we've got it in the wide channel. A good clean from the number nine, um, which shouldn't normally happen. And if we look here, we go behind the first pod, behind the second pod, and look at that. We've got a lot of boys out wide. And we're putting them to the sword. If we just caught that ball, it would have been a very nice try. Um, and this is with the Russian boys. Within a year, they could play wide to wide um, in terms of how we did the training. So if I go to the next one, okay, yeah, you go. Um, so obviously, there's different mini moves. You'll see there, okay, they take it up hard. Sometimes you've got to take it up hard. You've got options. So this is keeping the defense honest all the time. Look at the width we get. we've got an attack. So because of this width on attack, it will open up spaces sooner rather than later. Okay, so yeah, you see there's the three-man pod. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm going to play it again. So the three-man pod, as we get to the width, um, I'll just forward it a bit. The three-man pod, yeah, sometimes we can play the first player. Generally, I find that you don't have to be, because most guys hit the middle guy. But you can see uh, you've got a three-man pod and then one guy that should come off that three-man pod. But we hit the first guy and that opened up the space for the backline player in behind. And there was just too much, because of the width we attack with, um, too much space um, for the defense to cover. Okay, so let's just go. Andre, there is a, a question. Uh, isn't best solution uh, from Enrico uh, the best solution to adopt different distribution on different position on the pitch? Yeah. So, so, so we're gonna we're gonna come to that now. But what I'd like to say to to the coaches is that um, if you create a, a a shape that's a bit wider, you can be so much more creative within that shape. And you can allow your players to make decisions. And as we come, I'm going to show a video clip where we're training um, the different uh, aspects and the different pod shapes. You as a coach can be, become creative with your mini moves and how to attack the, the space. So because you've also got to look at, as because I, I had been a defense coach, I was looking now as an attack coach, I look at, Okay, what is the defense coach teaching the defense and how we can beat that? So where are they, for example, where are they, their eyes? Are their eyes towards the ball? Then we can get an angle behind their, their head when they're looking up, they're in trouble. So that's a good question. Hopefully I'd answered it. Um, and then also when we get to the end, we can, we can there's no right or wrong, guys. Um, your system, as long as you know why you're doing your system and the players understand why you're doing it, then, then it's good. All right. So I see there's a few minutes left before we're going to change. So let's just get into this. So if I can encourage the coaches, you must develop an attack that can go between outside and behind the defense. So if we just speak about that quickly, if we've got width on our attacking shape, then the defenders should spread out. So it's going to give us opportunities to go between with mini moves like, for example, the face ball um, or the ball in behind the pod. Um, we want to go outside them. That's I showed you guys nicely with the width that we create. And then behind is the kicking game. So like you saw um, that little kick that we put through to isolate a player at the back. Once we've isolated that player, we hit the next two breakdowns hard to try and get a turnover. If we don't, 
then it's fine. Then they will kick the ball back to us at some stage. Um, and then we've got our counter-attack plan in place, which is a total different attack again, which maybe Otavio will get me on again and uh, I can speak a bit about um, the counter-attack. All right. So, Otavio, you must just let me know if there's uh, some more questions. So, how are we going to do it? We're going to be flexible with the shape, but have width on the shape. The second thing, sorry, create a maximum of two targets between the 15s. All right. So that's important because a lot of the times people say you've got to earn the right to go wide, but we've actually got to see when the ball is quick, then we can go wide. Whether it's after one phase, it doesn't matter. Um, so creating a maximum of two targets between the 15s. And I've got a nice illustration on that, which we'll show you as well. Okay. Then return to action pre and post contact. Okay. So which is very important with a shape attack is to get into that shape as quickly as possible. So, so guys, if we have a look, then um, we've got to be flexible with our shape and width. But what I mean by flexible is we don't need to just stick to a one, three, three, one. We can go and look at different shapes. To me, the ideal attacking shape, as I said earlier, was that two, 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 two with the centers in behind. And we're going to have a look at as an illustration on that a bit later. Then the second thing, which where I was at was creating maximum two targets between the 15s. And we're going to have a look at that also um, in the illustration. Then the return to action. So once we've either done something or we're going to do something, we need to get back into position as quickly as possible. And that is something that you as coaches have to drive within your session. And I'll explain something to you later in terms of that, because it's not always just one coach. There are a few coaches. And, and how do we use those coaches at our sessions? Then the running lines, run early or late into space. Okay, so basically what that is, is that if I'm running an unders line towards the ball carrier, um, normally what they say is you've got to pick your line early and run hard. So that's running lines, run early when you're running an inside line. When you're um, wanting to drift on the ball, so as the pass comes, you have to drift late, like on the Tyron Green try, where he just moved into the mid space on the outside of the defender. Um, so that's when you're drifting out, you can drift out late. Okay, offloads from the feet and from the ground. So you've got to coach offloading. Offloading will be somebody said to keep the ball. But if you don't train offloading, you'll definitely throw the ball away. But if you train offloading, it's a great way of keeping continuity and getting flow into your um, game plan. Then clarity on decision making. Okay, so what are we speaking about there? So once we've got momentum, so we get good go forward ball, normally you have to keep on playing the same way. Okay, if we've got no momentum, it's not bad then to change direction and to come back to the blind um, or to the negative side. Okay, and then a nice little thing that I try and get my boys to do is to play alternate pods. And I'll explain that in the following um, slide as well. Then the last thing is um, the conserving of energy. So if I can speak to you guys about the conserving of energy. So everybody thinks the Springboks um, are amazed at the Springboks um, good defense. But one of the reasons why they defend so well is because they play no rugby in the back 50 meters of the field. So they've got a lot more energy to keep their defense at a very high level. Um, so when we're looking at attack, now I'm not necessarily a big fan of kicking everything, but when we're looking at attack, it's good to, to think of a plan 
where we can conserve energy. And I'll explain that to you as well in the next few slides. So let's see how do we train. So if we've got uh, the pods, you'll see here's a really good um, face ball from England with the three man pod in the middle. So we've got to break it up into middle pods, the middle of the field between the 15s and the sides. But let's just have a look at, that was a very nice try in, in the World Cup. Now it won't always be that easy. But yeah, you can have a look. This is the side pod. So yeah, we're working on the side pod. So we've got the three defenders to just make it a bit easy at first. We've got a short decoy runner and there we've got an inside ball. So next one, there again, okay, decides to go on the outside. So that's the side pod, continuous decision making. Normally the forward runners, there you can see um, there was a guy running on the scissors angle, a guy coming short and the guy was late in behind. So there's options to play. So this is, now yeah, we go again, there he plays and once again, so it's just a, a progression on our attack and our defense. So the defense is trying to rush. The attack is differing off nine and off 10. And yeah, you can see a um, good ball in behind, but it, they knocked it on. So let's have a look there. Plays the short ball. The fence is pretty good in the narrow areas. And then we go in, yeah, you'll see off, off the 10 again. And they moved it out wide nicely. Okay, so yes, the last way is to, to incorporate it in a game. <coughs> so we'll play what we call a, 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 a kick touch. So you'll see there, only they only allowed playing two phases in their own area. Um, and now he kicks the ball. So you can see the pods were set up very nice there. Let me just show you um, before the kick. Um, so there you see the three-man pod carrying it up. So it's a three-two shape. There's two forwards out here. There you can see the two forwards, the ball goes in behind and they put it onto the foot to try and isolate that player. So you've got to um, also let the players get into shape in chaos situations. So now the white team's got the ball. They've got two phases in their own area. If they can't um, get across the halfway line, then they've got to transfer the pressure. Um, so it's a nice little game where you get the players to, to look for space. Um, you'll have a look now. Okay, the kick chase was poor, two long passes, and they could try and get around them, get across the halfway line. Then you get four extra phases. They make a mistake, and now the counterattack is on. So now we move the ball, and you can see the game doesn't stop. Because a lot of the times, as coaches, we stop when the plan doesn't work. But meantime, that's a big mistake because we want to um, um, we we want to um, be able to train those transitions. So we break it down. Oh, sorry, sorry, guys. We break it down and then we build it up. So if we look at this illustration, okay, is that this is the field and we've got the two zones. We've got a zone inside the poles and a zone towards the outside of the poles. And we've got our setup three, two, or depending on how you want to set it up. So this will be our hammer space where we hammer into the first area. And then this will be our second area as our rocket. So it's easy, very easy. If we see the defense is a bit wider over on the wide angle, yeah, we'll call rocket, rocket, and it will go from 10 behind to the back, and you'll go to those forwards, or it will go to the first man behind, and we'll hit in here in the rocket. Okay, once we've hit the rocket, we want to go back to the side, or if we've hit the hammer, we want to go into the side pod. And so, this is an illustration, <coughs> we'll break it up in training. Sorry, guys. 
we'll break it up in training into a side pod, train the side pod, train, train the middle pod, and then we'll play a game where even while they're doing this, they'll do this activity for, say, four minutes, and the whistle will blow and the coach will throw in another ball, and then the player, players will have to react, get into their shapes, and play. So if I look here at the next, um, next slide, are you guys still with me? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, sorry, you guys are a bit quiet. So if we're looking here at the next one, the conserve energy. Okay, so this is essentially what I mean by conserve energy. So in my uh, attacking system, I'll divide the field into four zones. Especially for the forwards, because guys, the forwards have to work hard in set piece. They have to work hard in stopping the mall at the scrums and all that sort of thing. So you don't want your, your forwards running across the field um, from zone to zone. So this is why I like this uh, two, 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 two shape so much. Because you've got in green here, you've got your 9, 10 and 15 who are your game drivers. They can go anywhere. You've generally got your one, five, four, and three. It doesn't have to be in this shape, guys. As I said, I, I am a flexible person, but it's, it's very good for your props and your locks to know they can play up and down within zone two and three. But now in this zones, in these zones, um, what we'll do is we'll we'll put a few rules. So normally, if we go yeah in zone three, so the ball at the moment is with fourteen in zone four. Uh, if we go to zone three, then we've got um, these two players running a decoy, and we don't want to go into zone two. So we don't want to go from zone four to zone three to zone two. I want to go from zone three to zone one. Then we can go either to zone two or three. But if we get momentum, then we can go same way. Or if we don't get momentum, we can turn back to zone four. But the big thing about this is the width that you can get on attack. And you know that your players are going forwards and backwards in your attacking um, zone. So just again to summarize, um, Flexible shape with width, creating maximum two targets between the 15s, uh, return to action, pre and post contact, running line, lines early or late, offloads, um, feet on the ground, clarity on decision making, conserve your energy. All right. And then there, the clarity on the decision making, it's momentum, chase, same play, no momentum, chase direction no momentum, change direction, and then play the alternate pods. So just before we finish, I just want to show you guys um, this and jump to here quickly and show you this video clip. So you have to have a look at some of the things that, like have a look here, he switches. Now look at the sidestep and then run hard into space. And then, yeah, you can see the draw and the pass. So the passing is essential. So <clears throat> some of those stats coming through, uh, obviously, Bristol is coached by an ex-All Black in Pat Lamb. Yeah, you can have a look at the early line. So the running lines, hard and fast into space. And you can see that eighth man knew he was going to come hard and fast into that space. Um, so that was a really good... Um, example of running hard and fast into space with the running lines. Look at Tyron Green here. He drifts slightly. He just goes out slightly on the ball and he scores that try. He has the side pod. He gets, they get the side pod, get in the wide channel and it's an easy try because there's some mini moves within the side pod. I'm going to just stop my share and then we can have a chat and um, go to some questions. I have a first question for um, I saw how you work with uh, your forwards like pistons going up and down in some yeah. area of the field. I'm wondering how you work with your wings if they can like they stick on the 
the wing or they can move inside a lot uh, also to uh, keep the defense uh, narrow sometimes also yeah. like that yes. they move together you maybe in your team you can find uh, 11 and 14 on the same channel uh, running together or you're you prefer more the 15 moving uh, everywhere and uh, the two wings to spread the defense more so so what uh, what i also do is depending on where on the field so between the between the halfway line and the 22, I try and like to keep my wings on the width, and with the fullback moving in everywhere. Um, so he will be that inside option of 10. The fullback and the 10 work together. But as we go into the 22, the attacking zone, then I want my winger to go. We we'll look for work on the same side. Look for that inside ball. Look for the ball on the shoulder. And, and that sort of thing. So the big thing today, I think, is that Bob principle between outside or behind, that the coaches understand that they can plan how to go between, um, between the, the um, teams. So you want to break the line. Um, and that gets created because of a really good width um, on attack. Then the other thing is outside, the width of the attack will, it will mean the defense will spread out. And then also know that if the defense is holding you, holding you, holding you, what is going on in the backfield behind them to try and isolate a fullback or a player who they've got in backfield. And once they've isolated them, then we can put pressure to try and get a turnover and, and, and beat them. I see there's more questions. Let me just have a look. Okay, so the question is, how many phases from set piece or kick receipt until you are in your shape? All right, so I like to, to, to get um, a maximum of two phases and then we have to be in our shape. Um, and a lot of the times, guys, is we, you, you've got, where do we get most of our ball from? Nowadays, you don't get most of your ball from a set piece or from a, 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 from a scrum or a line out. You get way more ball from a turnover or a kick onto you. And so we've got to be able to attack um, from those phases. And that's why, especially with that uh, 2 2 2 system where the center is in behind, um, the boys get into that shape really quickly. And then it's up to them to make decisions and, and play. But I want to encourage you um, to, instead of over drilling, to, to create games. So, for example, another game, but I, my, my other computer got stolen. So, unfortunately, I don't have all the video footage. I'm, I'm not worried about the computer. I'm worried about the footage. And uh, I had a big um, amount of different uh, training games where in every training game, we, we try and get the boys to get into the shape as quickly as possible. Um, so what we'll do is we'll make the defense or the two guys closest to the, the tackle area. After, ta after making that tackle or body check, they've got to run around cones. And then later on, we'll say, okay, so now when that tackle is made, the two wingers have to drop. And then the, the, so the outsides drop. So now you're opening up spaces on different areas in the field where initially you're working on, okay, the space in the middle is getting um, opened up. Now the space on the outside is opening up. And now your players need to be able to see, okay, there's space on the outside. Let's open that up. Okay, there is another one from Nick. How long do you train on core skill, like passing and offloading versus learning through games and emphasizing on decision making? Okay, so... Uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, look here on my, uh, because I'm going to show the coaches uh, something quickly. Um, that's something that maybe uh, we can chat about because that's in itself, it's, it's a whole new, I'm going to share my screen if that's okay with the guys again. I just want to get the, the shot yeah. first. And then we have another one from Kostadin. We're gonna look at it in a, in a second too. Yeah, I'll just wanna. 
Uh, sorry, guys. Oh, no, take uh, your time. I just want to, because I've, I've got a few things that I try and do. Um, okay. So, yeah, we go. Okay, so if you guys can see, yeah, uh, first up. All right, so one thing is, um, if we look at this, we've got to start a, a I try and do all my training like this, where we've got a field set up and then we've got areas of the field where we're going to do a certain thing. We've got a game zone. So a game zone, it can be a rondo game, Fiji touch, um, six on 10. It can be different, different types of games. Then there's a skills zone where we work on skills, contact zone where we can work on contact and starter zone. Now, sometimes... <coughs> We won't get you. Um, we won't get you all the zones, but I try and at every session we have to do core skills, because your core skills, your catch and pass, is really important. Now the same setup that I've got here, we add the side pod and the middle pod, but as I said earlier, it's not. We can do a game where we have fifteen on fifteen and they're training, um, or we have 13 on 15, and then maybe there's too many balls knocking, and we'll blow, and we'll go to the skill zone, and we'll do catch and pass um, for two minutes. Then we'll blow, and it's chaos, guys. Training must be chaos. It's not, um, you, you've got to get your players out of their comfort zone, because if, if it's chaos, then it will be good for, um, okay, we've seen this slide. This is just once again uh, those um, sheets, the zones. Um, then just yeah, if I can show this to you. So just quickly on this specific one. So what happens here is thirteen works with one, four, and five. So you'll clean there. So we've got one, four, and five cleaning here. If we're there, if the ball comes to thirteen and he passes, thirteen will join them and twelve will move out. So we've got more width and more players. So that's just something that I needed to explain. So normally the center yeah, behind the first pod will be the cleaning center. Okay. The rest of them will just drop back into the shape. So that's just something there. But in terms of the training, um, it's that I stop my share there. Um, I think so. So in terms of the training, it's, it's chaos. It's, you've got to try and create chaos because in the game, you, you there's so many more activities where you get the ball from it's it's knocked out of the ruck or um, f from from crazy stuff. So so we're trying to game uh, play more games and games at training, um, narrow the field down. Okay, now we're going head on, open it up, all sorts of games in terms of that to get your players. But that's why your 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 system must be so to me a one three three one system it's a very safe system but you don't have that width because you're putting now two extra uh, extra player in each um uh, wide channel and you've got two forwards cleaning wide two cleaning on on in the middle in zone two and two cleaning in three so that opens up so many options for you as an attack um uh, just another question. Why are three pl uh, phase plays or so effective nowadays compared to last World Cup circle and why do you think attack has changed? Okay, so one thing the attack has had to adjust um, to the rush defense at the very top. If you're looking at international rugby, guys, the, the, the defense has dominated, okay? Because why the defense has dominated is it's a lot more difficult to um, to teach the skills and decision making and attack because you've got less time with the rush defense so um and that's why i like to watch to lose and i like to watch um what's the other uh, guys um these uh, bristol bears and and those teams because their skill level are so is so high but you'll see that they spend especially in the pre-season and off season they spend a lot of time on skill development individual skills uh, team skills. I like to call it team skills. So there's a few skills that I work on hard. Is I call it transfers. Now transfers are 
any form of pass. So that's a, 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 a normal short pass, long pass, it's offloads and then pop up off the ground. We play a pop touch. So we play a touch when a guy gets touched, he goes to ground and he's got to pop it up. If there's somebody that can um, intercept, he's got to not pop it up. He's got to place it back because that allows for decision making. So, um, so to me, those skills are vital. And even in season, you've still got to do a lot of skill work and then put them in the situation. You can't do skills without, um, because that's a good question to ask the coach. When is it a skill and when is it a technique? Can somebody I tell can me um, the difference? It's okay. So, yeah. basically, yeah. Um, for me, first of all, you start with the uh, opportunity. This is when you discover that you can sidestep or use an offload. And as soon as you start practicing this type of, uh, of place, like using, let's say, uh, let's say sidestep by the 12, offload to 13 for a short ball. And when you isolate this play and you start working on it, then it becomes a skill. And after that, this skill becomes, um, becomes vital as soon as you put it into a game because you can isolate every single opportunity during coaching mm -hmm. and make it proficient. But when the, when the real time comes, when game time comes, most of the players don't execute it because, because of pressure. Mm -hmm. And that's why for me, skill is uh, really dependent on the 10,000 hour rule. I don't know if you, if you heard about it. Yeah. It's very big thing and it's very important for coaches, especially in UK, most of the skill coaches put this type of work on a certain skill, let's say offload, kick, pass, doesn't matter. And then this opportunity turns into a skill. When it's isolated, explained when you need to use this offload or this sidestep, why you use it and the consequences of using it. Because most of the time we play through instinct. So this instinct comes when we have a lot of game time, when we have a lot of experience playing on a higher level but coaching some players that come from a academy or a, from the youth grades it's very important to give them explanation why these players do that and why we search this from them why we search this offload why we do it and stuff like that so the skill is very important to be isolated first explain it and then repeat it maybe thousands of times every single day Under percent so that's 100 percent right so it's a technique is when we do it isolated then we're working on the technique if we go into pressure situation then it becomes a skill because we can't go into the game and we haven't put it under pressure at training so i'm just going to share my screen quickly um and show you guys this video uh i'm just going to look for it first so I know we've seen this video, but there's something that I wanted to add that I didn't, I took it out. Oh, sorry, it's the wrong one. Uh, where is it? Sorry, guys, just give me a sec. Let me find it. Um, Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just. I'm just looking for it. I'll. I'll be with you guys now. Oh yeah, here we go. So, to show you guys quickly. So here's an example of how we break it down. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna put that down. Okay. So, the the bags. Yeah, the tackle bags are um, defenders, and now we're working on the decision making of the middle or the side pod. This is specifically now more for backs, but we do it with, with um, because these were the Russian players. Um, so that's how I started with the Russian players. I started, okay, let's do the decision-making against no uh, bags, uh, no defenders. So the bags are the defenders. So now they can see, okay, you'll see uh, the running lines are important and those are things that we worked on to get the decision-making right. Um, there you can see outside. 
So there's a lot of different stuff that we're working on. So that's very easy because the defenders aren't moving. I'm just going through it quickly. So now I want to take you to the next thing. Okay, so yeah, we go into a game situation. So we've got three defenders and four attackers and they'll continuously play. Sorry, they just, uh, so they go through and score. And now you'll see, he's got to go. And now it's, now the decision-making is becoming a skill because they're looking at what is the defense doing, turning the shoulders in, coming in. Okay, now the long ball should be on. Good decision. Okay, so I'm just going to stop the share there. So to illustrate your point there is the first time we were working on the technique of decision making, just okay, this is how we're running it over and over, but it only becomes a skill when we put it under pressure. So for the coaches, that's important is even when you're doing normal passing, they can stand, they don't have to run even, then they start running, but then you have to later put in defenders because once you put in those defenders, now it's simulating what we're doing in a game. Any other questions? So there's one. Why do you think every team that plays All Blacks are using very often 2-1 one or 1-1 one, one pattern of play? Look, the All Blacks are very difficult to, to break down. I, I, I liked what Australia was doing. They were hitting and, and coming back, if that's what you mean by the 2-1 one and 1-1 one, one question. So the All Blacks are, are a the team that rushes defense, but they've, they don't, they're not like the Springboks umbrellaing in so the only way at the moment is in international rugby is you'll see a lot of things to try and beat the rush defense is to change change direction a lot and also because teams don't get the momentum it's difficult then to keep going same way and they're changing the direction so i think that's why a lot of the teams the first try australia scored in that last test match was an unbelievable try because um, they just kept on coming back the reverse side, uh, challenging the defense because those guys um, aren't always as prepared as same side uh, defenders. Just a quick uh, question about that. Does this pattern of play creating a lazy forward for, or lazy folding? Is it yeah. uh, a common thing about, uh, about theories rugby? Because I've noticed watching the Super Rugby Aotearoa, most of the teams, after the third phase, going the same way, they start doing lazy folding. So they start stop looking <coughs> in front of them and they start just folding like a, a, a normal skill, as we say, isolated. <coughs> and after that, they got picked up by a reverse pattern of play. So mm. when you come back the same way, they always struggle. Isn't it that something that South Africa will target this year? What do you think about that? Yeah, look, I think, as, as you said, um, in, on, at that level, when you're working with the high performance players, what they'll do is they'll try and condition the defense. So they'll condition the defense to go one way. And then in the second half, they might change that and then start playing back towards the opposite side. So when you condition to fold or fold, 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 and suddenly you change that up, then it's um, then it's a really clever attack. Um, so I think that's something um, in terms of you know. But at a lower level, it's not always that easy to be able to do that with your teams. Um, and the big thing is to have a clear plan and to be able to do it with speed, and then that decision making. Any other questions? Things yeah, I don't forget the moment is the most offensive team in the world? Offensive team. Offensive, yeah. Angelo, think about the, the work uh, of the ball, without the ball, the offensive part, that part. So yeah. what do you think? So look, South Africa, South Africa, um, they're going to tackle you hard. They want to get create, they want to create uh, tries from uh, their defense. So in doing that, you have to be superior. Your fitness has to be really good and you have to get up off the ground quickly. So return to action. So a lot of the times that's a big thing in South Africa is you're going to get evaluated on your effort. 
So how quick can you get up off the ground? You're not allowed to lie on the ground for longer than three seconds. 2.5 seconds, that's maximum two seconds. You, you tackle, you get back up. And same with the kicking. So <clears throat> once we kick, we've got to put pressure on that kick. If we can get it back, we've got Colby, we've got Mapimpi with speed, and we will um, try and utilize them on one-on-ones because they're very difficult to defend on those one-on-ones. There's another question just pop out now. Is there any particular stats or metrics you like to inspect while evaluate, evaluating attacks? Yeah, so attack, to me, it's about um, if, if you can, can create, number one is gain line. So, so um, if, if, if your attack can create gain line and line breaks, um, because obviously nowadays, um, with the rush defense, they're trying to stop you behind to get momentum. Um, and I think that's why you'll see a lot of the play will go into the reverse side because of that rush defense. So to me, you can do so much stats and analysis, um, but sometimes those are just numbers. Um, so I will really encourage the coaches at training um, they have to be able to do the basic skills. Um, as you said there, most of those tries, passing, offloading, sidestepping, running hard and fast into space, those are the core skills. So I like to take those stats and say, okay, now I've got those stats um, and width, width was the last one. So now I've got to design a game plan with width and then it allows them, uh, allows my players uh, the best chance of scoring tries. Then another one, do you use time mechanism for teaching lane running or you put emphasis on instincts? No, so, so what we'll do is the same video I showed you with the tackle bags is we'll, st we'll start with that and then the player can either, so they'll attack the outside of the bag and then step hard and come on the on on a on a short line, and then we'll go to the outside, and then we'll go to where, where what I showed you with the three on threes, or three on fours. We'll go three on three. So there's three attackers. Three. You attack this side. It turns around. Attack this way. So now it's live, and we build it up, and that develops the instinct for, and then we put it in a game. So, okay, now in that game, you've got to use those abilities. So that's a very important part of the game, but you've got to build it up, the technique first, and then put it into a game to become a skill later on. And then another quick question I have about, what do you think about the 50-22 loss? Do you like the idea of uh, to improve space, to kick back down there and have the ball back? How is this? Yeah. Yeah, I think I like it a lot. Um, hopefully, it, it will change because, you know, the coaches are very clever. Um, so, you know, they want as many, the defence coaches want as many players in the front line. So, hopefully, it will, will mean that they do, do push some uh, players back. I think especially off a scrum, um, just on, the, on your side of the half, it's going to, be interesting to see how it develops because it's going to be difficult to defend if you've got three players back where generally the rule is to have two players back. Um, but if you've got two players back, you're opening up space somewhere um, and whether that will mean they're going to kick it into the middle field space or they're going to, if they don't cover the two touch lines um, to kick into that space, but if they have the wingers back, then it will allow the attack to open up a bit. Just quickly, I, I've got another video, a short video, which might show the, the, the coaches uh, quickly um, that it's, it's... So let's just have a look here. It's a bit of a kicking battle at first. Um, I'm just going to forward it a bit, okay. So... <clears throat> This is a good example of what we were speaking about, about the attacking the reverse side. So yeah, we get the ball back, a good little carry, 
Um, and we attack the short side with the over the top ball. So now we've got nice momentum, but they slowed it down. Uh, a good carry, but not real momentum. So because we didn't get go forward, we went uh, back to the blind side. And you see there, immediately we get back, we get um, some, some momentum. Um, my halfback was injured, so the second halfback was on here. Um, so you can see there, the reverse side was a good thing. Then they nearly messed it up. And we had those two, and it just created a bit of a disconnect and we, our 10 saw that space to go in between. So it's just a thought there because that was one of the questions is to keep on attacking that, um, the reverse space until it opens up on, on, on the same side. Um, but thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a, a bit different, a bit other. Uh, I, I try and um, think a bit different, but I also try and show you guys examples of how it's worked for teams that I've coached. Um, and then also, hopefully, you've learned from some of the drills and the skills. Um, but one thing is we've got to try and make it chaos and fun because that is fun for the players, is when we, um, when we create games instead of just drills. So... For example, you're going to handle the ball a lot if, if, you, if you can get creative with your uh, games. Um, yeah. And I thank you. From anyone. Yeah, if you guys have other questions, I will try to and this is the, the right moment before we're going to wrap it up. So. And actually, I want to say thank you so much, uh, Andre, because it's really interesting what you said. For me, in my opinion, I'm really focused on attack usually but I'm not coaching, so I'm just studying in this couple of last years through pandemic and moves. So thank you so much for you because everybody can learn from a different environment, different uh, cultures, no? Because sometimes we always say, ah, oh, South Africa, not me, but you can listen sometimes boring rugby, no? But it's, it's yeah. not. There is a lot, much effort on what they're doing. And if they are... Uh, World Cup winners, <laughs> British Lions mm -hmm. here winners, is not just defense. That's uh, that's is really important mm -hmm. to understand. Also, so guys, thank you so much to been here. See you next week with uh, the Italian um, Italian webinar with Sergio Zorzi, and then uh, in a week we're gonna have Sam Larner. I'm gonna send to everybody more information. You happy to join uh, the? Facebook group of Coach Ovali, the um, YouTube channel, you can find uh, uh, all, all new information. So have a great day, Andre. Thank you again. And uh, see you on the next webinar. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks for organizing. Bye.